ages, people have been fascinated by the fierce but honorable warriors that have dominated Japanese history. After all, even today, movies are made about these mysterious warriors from medieval Japan. Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today we're going to tell you guys the history of the legendary samurai warriors. So, let us begin. The Samurai, a prominent military caste in medieval Japan, originated as regional warriors before rising to power in the 12th century with the establishment of the Shogunate, the country's first military dictatorship. The Samurai, as servants of the Daimyos, or Great Lords, backed up the Shogun's authority and gave him control over the Mikado, Emperor. The Samurai would continue to rule Japan's government and society until the Meiji Restoration in 1868, when the feudal system was abolished. Despite being stripped of their customary rights, many Samurai rose to positions of power in contemporary Japan's politics and business. More crucially, Bushida, or the Way of the Warrior, the old Samurai Code of Honor, Discipline, and Morality, was restored and adopted as the primary rule of behavior for much of Japanese culture. Early Samurai Following the Battle of Hakusukinoi in 663 AD, which resulted in a withdrawal from Korean affairs, Japan experienced extensive change. The Taika Reform, issued by Prince Naka Noe, Emperor Tenji, in 646, was one of the most important. The Japanese elite was able to absorb the Tang Dynasty's governmental system, bureaucracy, culture, religion, and philosophy because of this order. The populace was forced to report for the census on a regular basis under the Tai Code of 702 and later the Euro Code, which served as a prelude to national conscription. With better awareness of the demographic distribution, Emperor Monmu enacted a rule requiring one in every three to four adult men to join the national military. These soldiers were forced to provide their own weapons in exchange for duty and tax exemptions. This was one of the imperial government's initial attempts to create an organized army fashioned after the Chinese system. The Taiho Code organized most imperial officials into 12 levels, each divided into two sub-ranks, with the first rank being the emperor's senior council. Those in the sixth rank and lower were known as samurai and were in charge of day-to-day -day matters. Despite the fact that these samurai were civilian governmental workers, the contemporary word samurai is said to have originated from this phrase. Military personnel, on the other hand, would not be called samurai until later generations. Heian Period The samurai were the armed followers of wealthy landowners during the Heian Period, lasting from 794 to 1185, many of whom deserted the imperial court to make their own fortunes after being pushed out by the strong Fujiwara clan. Beginning in the mid-12th century, actual political authority in Japan began to migrate away from the emperor and his nobles in Kyoto and toward the heads of clans on their vast estates throughout the country. Two of these powerful clans, the ruling Taira and the Minamoto, were thrown against one another in the Genpei War from 1180 to 1185 in a quest for control of the Japanese kingdom. The conflict came to an end when Minamoto Yoshitsune, one of Japan's most renowned samurai heroes, led his clan to victory against the Taira near the village of Dan no Ura. Kamakura Period 
Minamoto Yoritomo, the victorious commander and half-brother of Yoshitsune, whom he exiled, founded Kamakura as the seat of administration. The samurai gained all actual political authority in Japan when the Kamakura shogunate, a hereditary military dictatorship, was established. Yorimoto went to considerable measures to create and define the samurai's special position. No one could call himself a samurai without Yoritomo's consent. Many samurai were drawn to Zen Buddhism, which was introduced to Japan from China during this period. Its austere and basic rites, as well as the notion that redemption came from inside, served as a suitable philosophical backdrop for the samurai's own code of conduct. During the Kamakura era, the sword gained a significant deal of importance in samurai society. The artistry of swords, which included precisely hammered blades, gold and silver inlay, and shark skin hand grips, became an art in and of itself. Ashikaga Shogunate During the Kamakura and Ashikaga Shogunates, many samurai clans fought for supremacy. In the 13th century, Zen Buddhism expanded among the samurai and served to mold their norms of behavior, notably in terms of conquering the dread of death and killing. But pure land Buddhism was preferred by the ordinary public. In 1274, China's Yuan Dynasty, founded by Mongols, dispatched an army of 40,000 troops and 900 ships to attack Japan in northern Kyushu. To counter this menace, Japan gathered just 10,000 samurai. Throughout the assault, the attacking force was plagued by large thunderstorms, which supported the defenders by inflicting massive fatalities. The invasion was called off once the Yuan army was returned. Small explosives were employed by the Mongol invaders, which was possibly the first time bombs and gunpowder were utilized in Japan. Recognizing the threat of a second invasion, the Japanese defenders began building a massive stone barrier surrounding Hakata Bay in 1276. This 20-kilometer-long wall, completed in 1277, ran around the bay's perimeter. Later, it would be a great defensive position against the Mongols. From 1275 through 1279, the Mongols sought to resolve issues diplomatically, but every ambassador sent to Japan was beheaded. Kublai Khan continued to send messengers to Japan in the run-up to the Second Mongolian Invasion, sending five diplomats to Kish in September 1275. Huj Tokimune, the Kamakura Shogun Shiken, retaliated by bringing the Mongolian ambassadors to Kamakura and executing them. The tombs of the five executed Mongol emissaries may still be seen in Tatsunokuchi in Kamakura. Five further diplomats were dispatched by the Mongol Empire on July 29, 1279, and were beheaded once again, this time in Hakata. The Mongol Emperor's continuing defiance set the setting for one of the most legendary battles in Japanese history. In 1281, a Yuan army of 140,000 soldiers was assembled, together with 5,000 ships, for the second invasion of Japan. A Japanese army of 40,000 soldiers guarded northern Kish. When a hurricane slammed over Kish Island, the Mongol army was still aboard its ships, ready for the landing operation. The Mongols were beaten once more as a result of the typhoon's casualties and devastation, as well as the Japanese defense of the Hakata Bay barrier. Despite being massively outnumbered, the samurai defenders of Japan 
were assisted by thunderstorms of 1274 and the typhoon of 1281. As primogeniture became more widespread, family discord arose in contrast to the legal division of succession that existed before the 14th century. To discourage infighting, adjacent samurai lands were invaded often, and samurai squabbling was a continual concern for the Kamakura and Ashikaga shogunates. Tokugawa Shogunate The Sengoku Jidai, or period of the country at war, came to an end in 1615 with Tokugawa Ieyasu's unification of Japan. For the first time, the samurai took on the task of ruling by civil methods rather than military power, ushering in a 250-year period of peace and prosperity in Japan. Ieyasu published the ordinances for the military houses, which instructed samurai to train in both weaponry and genteel studies in accordance with Confucianism's precepts. During the Tokugawa period, this rather conservative faith, with its focus on loyalty and duty, surpassed Buddhism as the major religion of the samurai. During this time, the ideas of Bushido began to develop as a basic code of conduct for all Japanese people. Though Buddhist and Confucian thinking influenced Bushido, its warrior spirit remained consistent with an emphasis on military abilities and bravery in the face of an opponent. Frugality, compassion, honesty, and caring for one's family members, particularly one's elders, were also stressed in Bushido. Even while they maintained their sense of themselves as fighting men, many samurai were obliged to become officials or take up some sort of commerce in a peaceful Japan. The privilege to carry swords was confined to samurai until 1588, creating an even larger divide between them and the farmer-peasant class. During this time, the samurai was known as the Two-Sword Man, since he wore both a short and a long sword as a symbol of his status. However, many samurai's material well-being deteriorated throughout the Tokugawa shogunate. Samurai had previously relied on landowners for a set stipend. When these stipends decreased, many lower-level samurai became unhappy at their inability to improve their condition. Meiji Restoration The Tokugawa regime's stability was threatened in the mid-19th century by a number of circumstances, including peasant revolt caused by starvation and poverty. The invasion of Western powers into Japan, particularly the entry in 1853 of U.S. Navy Commodore Matthew C. Perry on a mission to persuade Japan to open its doors to foreign trade, proved to be the last straw. Japan signed a trade pact with the United States in 1858, followed by similar agreements with Russia, the United Kingdom, France, and the Netherlands. The contentious decision to open Japan to Western trade and investment fueled opposition to the shogunate among Japan's traditional elements, including many samurai, who began asking for the emperor's reign to be restored. In early 1868, the strong clans of Choshu and Satsuma joined forces to depose the Tokugawa shogunate and proclaim an imperial restoration called after Emperor Meiji. In 1871, feudalism was abolished. Five years later, swords were prohibited for all, save members of the National Armed Forces, and all samurai stipends were turned into government bonds, frequently at a severe financial loss. Several samurai rebellions were put down by the new Japanese National Army in the 1870s, while some disgruntled samurai joined secret, ultra-nationalist societies, including the notorious Black Dragon Society, whose goal was to cause trouble in China 
so that the Japanese army could invade and restore order. The Meiji Restoration was, ironically, orchestrated by members of the samurai class themselves, despite the loss of their privileged status. Three of the New Japan's most powerful leaders, Inoue Kaoru, Ito Hirobumi, and Yamagata Aritomo, had studied under the famed samurai Yoshida Shoui, who was killed in 1859 following a botched attempt to murder a Tokugawa official. Former samurai were instrumental in putting Japan on the path to becoming what it is now, and many would go on to become leaders in many aspects of contemporary Japanese culture. Bushido in modern Japan. Shinto was proclaimed the national religion of Japan during the Meiji Restoration. Unlike Confucianism, Buddhism, and Christianity, it was entirely Japanese, and Bushido was accepted as the country's moral code. By 1912, Japan had improved both its military and economic might. It struck an alliance with Britain in 1902 and conquered the Russians in Manchuria two years later. At the end of World War I, the country was acknowledged as one of the Big Five countries at the Versailles Peace Conference, with Britain, the United States, France, and Italy. In the 1930s, the liberal, cosmopolitan 1920s gave way to a renewal of Japan's militaristic traditions, which resulted in imperial aggressiveness and Japan's entry into World War II. During the war, Japanese soldiers used ancient samurai swords and launched suicide bonsai attacks in accordance with the Bushido philosophy of death before dishonor or defeat. After the war, Japan re-emerged as one of the world's greatest economic and industrial powers in the late 20th century, relying on its strong sense of honor, discipline, and devotion to a common cause. Not the daimyos or shoguns of the past, but the emperor and the country to rebuild itself and re-emerge as one of the world's greatest economic and industrial powers. So that is all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you all next time.